Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reading Rainbow. My name is Randall Sanborn Fields, and I'm your host. So today we're going to read about alien abductions. Investigating the unexplained. So let's begin. The table of contents, a waking nightmare, close encounters, memories of abduction, truth hunters, earthly explanations, the search continues, glossary to learn more and index. A Waking Nightmare Jay often wakes in the middle of the night, but this time something is terribly wrong. He cannot move and he can hardly breathe. Something is pinning him down. Dark figures gather at the corners of his vision. Are they shadows? Strangers? He tries to call out to scream anything. The figures look almost human, almost. They stare down at Jay with huge black eyes. What do they want? The creatures are closer now, crouching over Jay. Then something touches him, long fingers pressed into his flesh. He thinks he hears a voice. Is it in his head? Jay. 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 He jerks awake. It's almost noon. Jay never sleeps this late. He waves his m mom away and grabs his phone before he can forget about what happened. Online, he reads story after story about aliens. They are strikingly similar to his. Was he abducted? Wanting to believe, around half of all people believe aliens exist. Most of them also think aliens have visited Earth. Close Encounters Ever since humans first gazed at the night sky, we have wondered, are we alone? Scientists search deep space for signs of life. Movies and books imagine what might be out there. Yet, millions of people worldwide feel these questions are already answered. They say they have been abducted by aliens. Their stories are very similar. They wake suddenly or see strange lights at night. Aliens abduct and examine them. Afterward, chunks of time are missing from their memories. Could so many people be wrong? Stages of an abduction. 1. Capture. Victims are taken at night often from their beds or while driving. Many report seeing strange lights or UFOs. Two, examination. Victims are studied by aliens, usually aboard a spaceship. Some abductees also speak to the aliens or get a tour of the ship. Three, return. Aliens return victims often to the same place they were taken. Many abductees report hours of missing time from their memories. Memories of Abduction In 1961, Betty and Barney Hill spotted a UFO along U.S. Route 33 in New Hampshire. It followed their car down the lonely stretch of highway before stopping directly above them. 
Barney saw dark figures at the UFO's windows. Suddenly, the couple found they could not remember the past two hours. When they returned home, they realized their car and clothes were damaged. The Hills believed they had been abducted by aliens. Psychiatrist Benjamin Simon used hypnosis to help them recover their missing memories. The Hills described their capture and examination in detail. Their story drew national attention. The Greys The Hills described one of the most common types of aliens seen during abductions. Greys are small and bony with gray skin. They have huge bald heads and large black eyes. Top Secret Profile The Hill Investigation The Hill spotted the UFO on September 19, 1961. Two days later, Betty reported the sighting to an Air Force base. Radar confirmed a UFO in the area. The couple began working with Dr. Simon in 1963. Simon hypnotized Betty and Barney separately, but both recalled being taken and examined by aliens. Betty remembered being shown a map of the alien's home, which she later drew. School teacher Marjorie Fish found it closely matched a star system called Zeta Reticuli. The Hill's story remains one of the most famous abduction cases. The Hill's U.S. Route 33 Timeline New Hampshire 1. UFO first sighted 2. Barney sees dark figures 3 to 4. The Hills lose time for 32 miles 51 kilometers After the Hill case, abduction reports rose. Hypnosis became the main way to investigate alien abductions. Memories were seen as dependable evidence. The abductee's own brain might have blocked these memories, but they were still in there. A skilled hypnotist could reveal them. Some abductees claim to be part alien or have alien children. However, more proof was needed. In the 1980s, DNA testing became possible. Researchers could test DNA from abductees and suspected alien bodies. No alien DNA was ever found. The Star Child Skull In 1930, a girl found a large skull some believed was alien. DNA testing in 1999 suggested it was a boy's skull. Extra liquid around his brain may have caused his head to swell, but further testing could not prove his father was human. In the 1990s, hypnosis became less trusted. Many scientists believed it created false memories. A person might imagine something so strongly that they felt it had really happened. However, respected psychiatrists like John E. Mack still used this method. Mack interviewed dozens of abductees in 1994. He wrote a book claiming their experiences were real. 
but psychologist Susan Clancy wanted better data. She gave abductees personality tests. This helped determine how likely they were to create false memories. Clancy released her own book in 2005. It argued alien abductions had scientific explanations. Truth Hunters Abduction investigations focus on drawing out abductees' memories. Scientific tools help support or disprove their stories. <clears throat> Scientists agree hypnosis and memory can be unreliable. However, many feel hypnosis can be a useful tool when used carefully. Under hypnosis, patients enter a state between sleeping and waking. What their hypnotist says becomes their reality. Gone Fishing In 1976, four men went fishing in Allagash, Maine. While standing around a big campfire, they saw a strange light. The next thing they knew, the fire had burned to ash. Under hypnosis, they all remembered details of an alien abduction. Three of them still believe it was real. Investigator Toolbox Hypnosis Lie detectors X-rays DNA tests Spectroscope to recover memories, a hypnotist asked patients to talk about their abductions. She might ask questions or have patients describe things. Whether true or imagined, these scenes feel real. Until hypnosis, most abductees only have faint memories of being abducted. How X-rays work, X-ray machine, particles, film, implant, X-ray, one, machine beam particles at body, two, particles pass through flesh and hit film, three, implant blocks particles to create shadow on film. Many abductees believe they have alien implants. X-rays can detect them. X-ray machines beam energy particles through a body and onto film. The particles pass through soft flesh, but hard objects block them. These objects appear on the film. Abductees can then have them removed and examined. Lie detector test. Lie detector tests show an abductee's physical response to their memories. Machines track their heart rate and breathing while they answer questions. The data shows whether they are lying. Several abductees have passed such tests. That means they believe in their stories, whether or not they are true. DNA test may be done if abductees claim to be part alien. Every cell in a person's body contains the same DNA. Certain parts of the DNA show they are human. Abductees provide a cheek cell or blood sample. The samples are tested and the results are compared to known human DNA. DNA testing. Strange matter found after abductions can also be tested. Scientists use spectroscopes to study the substance's color. They compare data with known substances to determine if it is earthly. 
they may do other tests based on the results, though the answers are not always clear. Betty's Dress After the Hill abduction, several labs tested a strange powder found on Betty's dress. They could not determine what it was. Earthly Explanations In general, abductees are not lying, and they do not have mental illnesses. Most are struggling to understand real memories they have. Skeptics study how people may come to believe they are or were abducted. Their strongest explanation is sleep paralysis, bumps in the night. Sleep paralysis may explain other frights throughout history. People around the world tell stories of ghosts or witches who visit at night. These monsters are said to sit on people's chests, holding them down. During deep sleep, our brains produce chemicals that keep us still so we do not get hurt. Some people wake up before these chemicals wear off. During sleep paralysis, people often see strange figures, hear voices, and feel fear. Someone unaware of sleep paralysis might think an alien abduction best explains their experience. Another explanation says abductees have a hard time telling fantasy from reality. Susan Clancy's studies showed that abductees are more likely to become lost in fantasy and create false memories. A strongly imagined alien abduction might begin to seem real to them. Examinations are common in abduction stories. Scientists believe a small number of abductees woke up while having normal surgery. They might remember doctors' voices or the touch of metal on skin. Then they add details from movies, stories, and their imagination. Frightening Forces Some people's brains may react strongly to unseen forces, such as th those that draw magnets together. This could cause them to see or feel things that are not there. More research must be done to know for sure. The search continues. Are aliens really abducting earthlings? Science says it does not seem likely. Evidence points to sleep paralysis as the most likely explanation. Still, no one has proven aliens are not among us. Machines are constantly scanning the stars for signs of life. Billions of planets like ours exist, and some might support intelligent creatures. Could those creatures travel to Earth and snatch us up in the night? What do you think? SETI SETI is a research center in California. Its name stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. SETI scientists search the skies for signals from advanced alien technology. And here you have the glossary. I believe in uh, extraterrestrials, and I also believe in alien abductions. I think they have happened. Um, too many people have similar circumstances. I read a book by uh, Bud Hopkins. It was called Missing Time. And I remember reading that 
at, um, I think I was 15 years old. I had never heard of this before, but uh, I went to, you know, I don't know if you remember uh, Borders Books. They used to have Borders Books. I don't think they have them anymore, but it was a big franchise back in the days. And Borders Books uh, was selling a book by Bud, two books by Bud Hopkins. One was Intruders, and another one was Missing Time. I think I bought both of them. Uh, so I bought... Uh, I think Missing Time and Borders Books. And I just took, a, you know, I read a few pages. And I was very interested, very interesting. The the allowance I was making was about like what I think it was like $10 a week. right? I mean, yeah, about $10 a week. And this was like $8. And I was like, I had to get it. So uh, I bought it and I was hooked. I, I finished the whole book. It was like about three to 400 pages. And at those times, uh, in those days, I didn't really enjoy reading so much, uh, these types of books, you know, with no pictures and, uh, you know, that were, were not suited for, uh, teenagers. I would say, I would say this, this book was more suited for adults. And so when I took it home, and I read the book, it just it sent chills down my spine, chills down my spine because uh, they had photos in there. The woman did not seem like, I forgot her name, but she did not seem like she was lying. It was a story. Uh, I think it's called, it's either it's Missing Time or Intruders, the story of the Copley Woods event. Uh, I can look it up here to see. Uh, if I can find it, hold on. So here is the the book. It was called Intruders, the Incredible uh, Visitations at Copley Woods. I think this was written in 1987. And it was by Bud Hopkins, who actually, I think he, I'm not sure if he died recently. He probably died recently. Um, yeah, and I read this one, Missing Time. And I also read uh, Secret Life by David M. Jacobs. Um, yeah, so I read this and it terrified me. It terrified me uh, to the bone. And from then, from that day on, because as I was reading, this woman was, was recounting her experience through hypnosis. I was it was like I was in a book with him with her and she was terrified she was terrified and uh from that day on from those times since I finished that that day on it's like I could see them you know because th this wasn't the cover this one was the cover and so every night from that day on including to to now uh I have to sleep with a light on. I sleep with the lights on. I never turn the, especially if I'm alone. I, uh, I sleep with the light on, and it started with this book. It was it was a terrifying book, terrifying. Um. So, this is Randall Fields, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please like and subscribe. We will have more of these uh, type of. Uh, um, alien abduction books. I think I can find many of them. I love science fiction. I, l I love space and the universe. So, of course, I want to read some things about this. So, yes, like and subscribe. Goodbye.